Jeremy, let's let's talk about cybersecurity mesh architecture. Like, I'm fun session, right? We had so much fun talking about it yep. this week, and I, I just want to continue that energy around. You know, how do we connect the different cybersecurity tools? There's so many out there. Every customer has 20 or 50 or 100 even. How do we connect those together in a way that makes it more intelligent? Connect is the key word, right? When we talk about the cybersecurity mesh architecture, it really is all about connection. So I love that you use that term, but uh, it really comes back to really, in my opinion, what we've seen is it comes down to two real key words. Number one is how do we leverage existing platforms that actually are intended and built around federating context between different various platforms and uh, technologies? And the other one is, we've been hearing this for years, but I don't necessarily know if it was this particular use case, but it's all about API first, right? A lot of the platforms that we've come to love and know over the past few years have all been evangelizing being API first, and that's really coming in handy as we think about how to, especially a partner like us, a solutions integrator, how do we come in and how do we take take our know-how and develop intellectual property that leverages that concept of API first to really start to aggregate that data and be able to distribute it across the different vendors, manufacturers, and platforms that, that we support in this cybersecurity mesh architecture. So I want to zero in on something. You said yep. platforms and you said yeah. it a couple times. Oh boy. So, I mean, from a CSMA perspective, as we dig into yep. that, you know, CSMA gives us the ability to leverage a reduced vendor set in an yep. environment, right? So everybody wants to be best of breed or, uh, you know, best in class, yep. however you want to say it, as far as the security technologies in play. But CSMA brings a concept of how do we reduce that vendor footprint, but still deliver high quality security, right? Yep. yep. And, and I think we've all come to recognize that the last frontier, as far as uh, heterogeneous environments still is security. Security still has their, their ponies, right? Everyone's got their favorite particular platform or this particular use case that really drives a specific security solution, manufacturer, platform, whatever that might be. And so, yeah, the, it's, it's a great question. And I think that's really what CSMA is trying to address is, is that look, at the end of the day, Every manufacturer is trying to get there, but there's always going to be gaps or there's going to be certain features or functions that come better from a different platform that maybe sits slightly adjacent or kind of fits in as a gap solution. And the real trick is going to be, how do we get those to work in, in concert, in harmony together to really provide the visibility, the context, the detail that we need to make the best decisions possible, whether that's at the time of onboarding a device, user, asset, machine onto the, in, into the network or after it's already onboarded, how do we make sure it's behaving the way that it's supposed to? And if it starts to stray outside of those structured guidelines, how do we make sure that we can quickly identify, alert, and if, if need be, instantaneously remediate any type of bad behaviors that are happening? So I think that's really what it comes down to is, is that this is all about making disparate systems work together as one holistic architecture. Something else that comes to mind as we, we really dig into all the different pieces of a, a meshed cybersecurity architecture is zero trust. So we've been talking about zero trust for forever. I know you and I both go back and forth in <laughs> yep. our, our experience in client environments and deploying yep. this. So I, I think of everything that cybersecurity mesh and I think of zero trust and how it all comes together to create a framework and an outcome for a client of a, a reduced risk footprint. Mm -hmm. but. Like, what's your perspective on that? Where does CSMA and zero trust kind of collide and intersect? There's the concept of zero trust, which is really a philosophy, right? It's all about limited access. And then you also have zero trust network architectures. So zero trust is really all focused around coming, uh, this, this, again, the philosophy of how do we provide as little access as possible to the assets and users that are requesting it. And so when we bring that back, right, is that it very much stitch into, stitches into this cybersecurity mesh architecture. Because the mesh architecture is all about how do we collect as much telemetry and data about what's happening within our environment, centralizing it so we're making really good decisions. So no longer is it going to be, again, you, you mentioned the history of zero trust. We go back to some of the early incarnations of that where it was a matter of, okay, how do we get firewalls that no longer permissively allow 
content to flow through them to everything has to have an explicit access control list. But that access control list is based off of purely IP address information, which was used for point and network, right? And now we're expanding beyond that because it, we've identified there are tons of ways to be able to intercept an identity that's purely based off of IP address. And so now when we think about cybersecurity mesh architecture, we really expand that lens. And so it's not hyper-focused on one specific network aspect, but we're looking at a variety of different data inputs. Everything about you know, the, the user, the time of day, the geolocation that they're accessing from, their role within the organization, the data that they're trying to access. And we just lump all this information into, together into this rich pool of, of contextual data that we can draw from, we can report on, we can alert on, and we can make really, really smart security decisions based off of. So I, I love it. It's bringing a next generation of intelligence 100%. to cybersecurity, yep. to a zero trust environment, to really help organizations be more secure and to be more secure in a way that doesn't bring a, a negative impact to the, the consumer in every organization. So I want to bring this home and talk about how do we make this a reality? And your team in delivery is, is out there every day working with clients to solve problems that are rooted in security. So I know that they've done some really awesome things about mm -hmm. around zero trust, around cybersecurity mesh, and even some that, that come together in the middle. You want to give us just a real quick uh, glimpse into what that looks like in the real world, how it all comes together? Yeah, and, and what's awesome is, is that again, I think cybersecurity mesh, mesh architecture as you know, not necessarily to call it a standard, but over an overall best practice or approach that we're starting to see adopted by the industry as a whole. Um, we're, we've already seen it in pockets because again, it is a maturation of something that's already existed. And so the team that I lead um, has already been addressing some very, very large scale challenges that have come up, especially as it relates to the pandemic, right? So we've seen a lot of things change within organizations. And some of those things are the adoption of public cloud. Some of those are a distribution of workforce. So it's no longer within the confines of a traditional office space um, and being able to control the, the physical location of where those folks are connecting from. Um, so when we think about all those things that have really exploded, you know, and, and you add on top of that the increase of threats that are happening, the, the number of bad actors that are out there trying to exploit various different organizations for a variety of different reasons. You know, we're literally at war. Like we are in the middle of a technology war and, and it all comes back to the same concept. And so a lot of companies that we're working with, you know, whether that be uh, healthcare, finance, um, you know, they're all struggling with this concept. And so what we're doing is we're taking a variety of different platforms. And again, I think there are two, when we think about the two different approaches that we have, we are leveraging our experience in some of these uh, different security tools that already have basically portions that are constructed for sharing information. And so we're leveraging that to uh, basically use network access control uh, with uh, solutions like Aruba ClearPass or Cisco ICE, uh, leveraging uh, IoT and device identification platforms like uh, Order or uh, Palo Alto IoT, uh, IoT data collection. And you know, really st starting to stitch these together to build this rich contextual pool of data and then building dynamic access control policies that allow us to push the overall enforcement of these policies as far out to the edge as possible. I know that we joked a little bit, you know, one of our other you know, key focus areas that we share is that concept of the modern edge. And really, the cyber, cyber security mesh architecture is the next iteration, or it's the incarnation of that modern edge that we talk about. Because it really is all about how do we push what we consider to be the boundaries of our security zones as far out and as close to that application and user as possible. Awesome, Jeremy. Really appreciate the time. It's great to, to look at how we are really helping our clients to, to simplify their security environments that are continuously growing in complexity, uh, but also how we're, we're helping them to reduce that risk footprint and deliver you know, a, an outcome from a business perspective that's driven through security. So Absolutely. thank you. It's so much fun to talk about this stuff. And uh, let's, uh, let's keep it crime. up. Partners in crime. Absolutely. Thanks, Rob.